Hey guys, Rollout here, and welcome to the first episode of Builder's Block. Alright, so what is Builder's Block? Essentially, it's like Writer's Block, or Artist's Block, but for LEGO Mockists, and it's how I would define a very specific sinking feeling whenever I sit down to create something, and I just can't come up with any ideas, or especially when I struggle to make something work the way I want it to. I get this tightness in my chest, and it becomes hard to breathe, and it's like every fiber of my body is screaming at me to stop to just put the pieces down and try again another day. I've suffered through a severe case of builder's block for over a year now, and it's finally time to do something about it. So over the course of February and March of 2017, I began a daily routine where at the start of my mornings, I'd dedicate some time to sit down and build something anything. It doesn't matter how small or simple or well done these creations are, as long as some progress is made at least once a day, that's good enough. For starters, my challenge was to keep this up for two whole months, never breaking the chain. Now, there were ups and downs in my creative spirit during this test run, but the challenge was completed and the quota was filled. The first three episodes of this series will document those two months. I'll go over each and every daily build, and also talk about some events that I attended to help inspire me along the way. Through this, you'll get a glimpse behind the scenes. You'll be able to see failed concepts or silly ideas that otherwise would have been immediately destroyed and lost forever. You'll also get to see ongoing development of certain projects, which then of course blossoms into sneak peeks for future videos. The goal here is to provide some insight into my design process, to give you a better idea of how this brain works. For the better or the worse. At some point in the future, I plan on turning this idea into a weekly show. I'll sometimes invite a guest to come on and share their own projects, talk about their creative style, and also discuss their inspirations, because at its core, this show is about becoming inspired and inspiring others. It is a block for builders who build with blocks, built to help people going through builder's block. Now, at the end of each episode, I'd like to showcase and comment on select creations that are sent in by viewers. For that, you can submit your own photos to contactrollout at gmail.com. I'd also like to remind everybody that this show is still very much in its rough stages. You can think of the first few installments here as beta testing or prototype episodes while I work out the format. For instance, I'm currently looking for theme music to help polish things up around here. A catchy opening jingle or maybe some intermediate transitions would really help. So if anyone listening composes music or does commissions, feel free to send me samples of your work. Once again, to contactrollout at gmail.com. With all of that said and done, let's get started. We'll kick things off by working through all of the daily creations that I built in February of 2017. So here's how this is going to work. I have a collection of photos prepared in a gallery, and I will be capturing the screen so that I can use my cursor to point out certain things as I go through each of these models day by day. Now I do want to mention that I took all of these pictures with my phone, and in hindsight some of them didn't turn out as clearly as I thought they did, so I apologize for that. Another thing is that I wish I took more pictures. I took at least two shots of each creation, but some of them I wish I got from a couple more angles. Oh well, we live and we learn. Now on day one, I wanted to start with a simple concept, so I built a Lego car. Pretty much everyone's built a Lego car, right? Now, I wanted to give it some kind of transformative property, so it has these giant boosters on top here, which spit out flames. It also has some secondary boosters in each of the wheels, 
and those top sections swing down, the wheels flip out, and you have a DeLorean-style flying car. I suppose the wheels could be flotation devices, and you've got an aquatic vehicle here as well. On day two, I wanted to build a creature, so I came up with this Mystic Tech Clockwork Dragon, and I think he's pretty cute. I started with the wings, so those are definitely more complex than the rest of the model. His body is extremely simple with very simple, you know, clip connections here, and in the neck, his limbs are just droid arms, simple as that. I really do like his face. I think it's very expressive with the, uh, you know, bulging eyes here. I left the stud on his nose because, I don't know, I think it looks pretty good and it's a, it's a tasteful stud there. Usually I like to get rid of all of them, but I like the way that one looks. And I also really like the gap creating his mouth here. It gives his face this great expression. You can see Lining the back of the wings, he has these, like I said, mystical tech magic boosters of some kind, and a flame on the end of his tail. On day three, I wanted to build something humanoid, something articulate, so I created this frame. Now, I did not end up building off of this in any way. If you can figure out how to build this yourself and want to create some armor for it, go ahead do that, but I chose not to. It's a very simple little thing using some T-joints and these old finger-style hinges. He's not fully articulated, he doesn't have wrists or ankle tilts, but he gets the job done, he gets into this pose, and that's all I really wanted him to do. You can see from the back here in his neck, he uses one of those universal wrench joints that I love so much. I use that in my build Burning Gundam and in a couple of other things. And I think it's a more interesting parts usage than simply using like one of the newer Mixel style toe ball joints. Um, it's just a bit more clever in my opinion this way. And I, I just absolutely love the movement that this allows. On day four, I wanted to build something that was wearable, so I came up with this ring. I am a big fan of tokusatsu, things like Kamen Rider and Super Sentai, and this is sort of a transformation device based off of probably something like Ultraman, I'd say, although there are definitely Kamen Rider wizard vibes, what with the four colored forms here, and of course this being a ring. The idea is that you have this dial on top. You can see I used a two by one slope here, and then one by one slopes here so that there's an indicator, you know, for the four forms there. And then you put the ring on just like this, press the button, and supposedly turn into some kind of superhero. I think it turned out pretty well, all things considered. Now another thing I wanted to do with this project was attempt building certain things that I had never built before. So believe it or not, this is my first ever vignette. And it's fairly simple. I built this uh, little cottage on a 8x8 plate here. Uh, you can see it has a path leading up to it. Some cobblestone walls, or maybe they're like metal walls with rivets. I don't really know. It's got like a thatched roof, this beam here, and an apple tree next to it. I really like how the tree turned out with the different colored greens, and then you also have some apples scattered on the grass below. Originally, I wanted to build like a chimney with a fireplace inside, but I couldn't figure out an economical way of doing that, so I decided to leave the cross-section completely empty. Maybe next time I'll try a vignette that's a bit more complex, but we'll see. On day six, I just built this simple little robot dude. You're probably going to see a lot of little robots over the course of this series. It's probably my favorite thing to build. What can I say? I like me some robots. This one has a lot of toe ball joints in him. He's pretty articulate, and he's slightly, ever so slightly, inspired by one of the row beasts from Voltron Legendary Defender, who has these, like, tentacle arms and shoots laser beams out of them. So I imagine he shoots beams out of his hands here. He can also use them to fly, so I gave him some boosters on the back of his legs as well to make that seem more feasible. So at the end of the first week, I actually attempted to make a proper LEGO Transformer, and I suppose you could consider this a failed attempt, but it is a thing that turns into another thing. I sort of gave up on this mode because I could see that it wasn't going anywhere, but I probably could have put a little bit more effort into this to make it turn into, 
uh, TV set of some kind was an idea I had. The outside section here could be black, the inside could be blue. That might have worked. But I did document the transformation. It does parts form a little bit. This section on top here comes off. These fold out. There are some hinges below here that open up these two side panels there. And you get something that looks like this after you open up those and those. And then everything here sort of solidifies into this shape and you take the extra piece and slide it in the middle and you have a lounge chair of some kind. So the idea was maybe like a living room set that could turn into like a TV and, and a couple chairs if I made more of these. It's a silly idea, but it would have made more sense than a red thing that turns into a red thing. Um, it's kind of fun to transform, but ultimately I decided to give up on this. On the next day, I wanted to build something to sort of fiddle with at my desk. This is an attempt at some kind of fidget toy, I suppose. It's not all that pretty looking, and it's made out of stud friction, so that kind of defeats the purpose, because if you play with it too much, it starts to fall apart. But you have this ring, and when you press on certain corners in different combinations, you get different shapes out of it. So you can kind of create this bow tie here. If you press on it a different way, you can get this star shape. Again, it's nothing special, but it was an idea I had. Maybe I can create something in the future that realizes this idea in a more solid way. Now on the ninth, I decided to attempt another Lego Transformer, and I think this is a better example of how my design process usually goes for my original character Transformers. Obviously it's a little bit different when I'm creating a character from the Transformer series, and there are occasional exceptions where I do plan out my original character Transformers, but more often than not, I kid you not, I just sort of throw hinges and movable pieces together to see what I come up with. Uh, now, I do have a lot of experience doing this, granted, so I sort of know my way around the pieces, I know what works and what doesn't, but on the first day here, I generally come up with a shape that turns into another shape, uh, and then I build off of it in the days after. So this is kind of a surmised shape that could potentially become a vehicle mode. You can see some hinges all about it. And it turns into this. So this is some kind of surmised robot mode. Perhaps like the chest would come from this section here and then legs could be built off of that. Uh, head could flip out or perhaps like this could be the face. You can see like maybe those are eyes and a mouth. I don't really know. I'll come up with the rest of it later is the plan at this point. Now, again, you can kind of consider this a failed attempt because it doesn't have a robot mode, but it is a thing that turns into a thing. It actually has two vehicle modes, and here is the first one. So on the second day, I, I realized it a little bit more. I finalized the shape of it, I uh, solidified the color scheme and actually gave it an identity. So you have this artillery unit here with like a cockpit and a grill and some wheels. Uh, wheels are missing from the front here, but I suppose they could be considered to be underneath this section here if you use your imagination. And then it has this like missile rack or like laser beam unit on top. I wish I would have gotten a picture of this from behind, but uh, oh well, we'll uh, we'll think about that next time. Now. I did take a picture sort of documenting the transformation. You can see some things happening in the center here. The wheels fold up. This comes out, flips out. Uh, some things shift in the middle section here on stud friction. And then you got some hinges that open up and uh, extend back here. And it turns from an artillery unit into a spaceship. And I kind of like the way this looks. It's a fun transformation, and you end up with this sort of like greebly looking, almost Star Wars-esque vehicle. Again, the cockpit retains like the same shape, so the pilot would still be inside this thing. Um, and then you got some like engine sections here. The missile rack turns into some boosters at the back. And again, you have some like greeblies on the side. I like the way it turned out, but... I would not consider this like an official installment in my LEGO Transformers series. 
Now, on day 11, I wanted to try building something that had a very organic shape to it. So I used these flex tubes here and created this curve in the body of what I like to call the Swolipede. <laughs> He's this like cartoony little centipede guy with big buff arms that he charges into battle with. It's a cute idea. Like I said, he's very cartoony. And from behind, he almost looks a little creepy. Like, it's so organic that, that, like, I don't know, it, it's weird and looks, looks a little spooky and actually creepy crawly to me. Uh, especially, you know, the legs, those don't help. And like the, uh, cockroach-like tail, as well as the antenna. I don't know. Like I said, he's a fun idea. I do like the way it turned out. So day 12 is the first day where I feel like I started running out of ideas or I started to get lazy because I built another little robot, but this time a very, very simple one. It kind of looks like something you'd get in a Lego advent calendar, I think. It's this tiny little remote control robot. He's got a gauge on his chest and like an antenna on his head, wrenches for hands. I remember wanting to use these cone pieces, so I slapped this on top of that, and I thought those looked like legs, so I built a tiny body from there. He looks all right, but, uh, eh. He's super, super simple. He goes beep bop, boop bop, walks around, and not much else. But uh, I certainly got that daily quota filled, didn't I? All right. On the 13th, I continued with the trend of building things that a lot of people do, but I have personally never tackled myself before. This is a mosaic of some kind. It cheats a little bit. It doesn't use you know, strictly one by ones. I filled some space with larger plates, but I think it looks all right. It's a, uh, a representation of the IX logo. I think it's pretty striking with the white background, the, you know, thick borders and the red. You can see it's on a large green plate here. I believe that's 16 by 16, I want to say, just eyeballing it. Not sure if that's accurate. But, uh, yeah, I think it turned out all right. It would definitely look a little bit better or more interesting if I had kept two one-by-ones, though. On the next day, I built this weird-looking thing. Uh, he's sort of like a cartoony slug guy with googly eyes. I don't really know. I wanted to make, like, a expressive face with, like, a mouth that could move. So this is what I came up with. I didn't really try for the body, so it's just sort of this shape. But uh, the concept is that his rows of teeth are on jumper plates and can spin around, so you can line up the slopes here in different ways and get different expressions out of his mouth. Uh, from the back, you can see how the hinges work. Yep, it's it's super weird. I don't know if I'd call this a success or not, but it is it is something. Now on day 15, I wanted to attempt this technique. I'd seen a lot of people do it. I had never attempted it myself. It's where you take all of these slopes and you line them up inside a frame. And it's very cool. If you've never done this before, I highly recommend trying it because you can get some super cool uh, textures out of this. All of these pieces stay in by friction. None of these slopes connect to a single stud, and it's really cool to see how this works in person. On the first day, I just wanted to test the technique out, so I didn't actually build a mosaic of any kind with it, but on the second day, I moved on to something a little bit more complex. You can see a scene there, and I am very happy with the way this turned out. You have a nighttime sky, some clouds, the bright moon in the sky, some grass, and a cabin. Uh, kind of similar to my vignette in a way with the cabin theme, but I, I really like how the clouds turned out. I worked a lot to make those look natural and organic, and I think it paid off. The moon looks very bright uh, in contrast to all of the other subdued colors. I am very happy with this. Now, once again, on the 17th, I attempted to make another Lego Transformer. Again, you know, second verse, same as the first. This is just a shape 
that turns into another shape. This, I suppose, is the surmised robot mode. It doesn't have any limbs at this point, but it does have kind of a visor and a head. This is it from the front, I guess, and this is it from the rear. I don't really know what I was going for, but uh, this is what the transformation gets you. It's a very simple transformation. You might be able to piece that together and see how it works. Nothing super special. Here it is from the back. Now, I struggled to make this turn into anything that looked all that great, and when I did come up with something, I couldn't make any sense of it. It's kind of bonkers, but I'll show you what it turned out as. So you have this guy. He's kind of cool. I mean, I like his aesthetic. It's very cartoony. It's, uh, I don't know, a little wacky. It's a strange concept. He's like a, a waiter bot or like a chef bot. Uh, I, I don't really know. He's got kind of a, a chef's hat of some kind or maybe like a bandana. Uh, this coat here with like buttons. His arms are platforms so he can like bust tables and gather plates. He's got like blush and like this big nose here and like a booster at the bottom. This is here just to hold him up. Uh, here he is from behind. Uh, you can kind of see how the nose is done there. It sticks out at the front but it also sticks out at the back. His transformation is actually fairly fun. It's just what he turns into Again, I couldn't really make any logical sense of it, but he goes from this, like, little chef bot thing into this dragon head? I, I don't know. The booster at the bottom becomes this horn, and then you replace the flame and put it in his mouth. It's kind of a cool technique. You have these little uh, knobs that stick off of these old-style flames, and they actually stick in to the little hole here on the bottom of the... Uh, the newer style of plates there. But yeah, you got this dragon head with the teeth and the jaw and the eyes. Here it is from the front. It's actually kind of intimidating from this angle. Uh, the only thing I could think of was that, like, he, he waits tables and, you know, like, like, busts the dishes for people. And then if somebody's causing a problem in the restaurant or they refuse to pay, then he scares them off with this mode. Uh, yeah, it is a robot that turns into an alt mode, but again, the idea was a little too wacky for me to consider this another official installment for my Transformers series. Um... It kind of reminds me of, like, those wacky Japanese cartoons. Like, not just anime, but a very specific kind of anime. There's a show currently airing in Japan right now called Heibot. It is just bonkers. And it's got robots that turn into things, and it's super silly. And this kind of reminds me of something from that. Uh, here it is from the back. You can kind of see where, you know, some of the features of the robot mode go there. On the next day, I built something super simple. I just wanted to use these pieces in red for something, so I came up with a simple idea. Uh, the concept here is that it's like a, a little puzzle of some kind. You have this shape here, and you're supposed to turn it into this without taking anything apart. So you can see these pins here. Um, it is able to split apart, um, and you kind of have to follow an order of operations. It's super simple, but it might be fun for kids to mess around with. I don't know. Uh, just try to make it turn from one shape into another without it falling apart. So here is this month's fourth attempt at a LEGO Transformer, and at this point you know how it works. This is the rough outline, the basic idea for a vehicle mode. At this point I'm thinking I could turn it into a spaceship of some kind, or maybe even a boat. You've got a lot of flat surfaces on the top here. I thought that maybe I could turn it into a deck, because you also have an attachment point back here that I could build off of and create, you know, the cabin there. The head sticks out at the front here, but there are plenty of ways to build off of this section here to hide that. Robot mode is a little bit shabby, I think. The arms are a little skimpy, those could use some work. There's a big gap in the chest. Arguably, it looks a little more complete from this angle with the flat surface there, but you do have the toe ball here just sticking out in the open. I figured I had something going here. This was a pretty good idea and a pretty good transformation scheme, but I set it aside 
and thought about it for a night, and then came back to it on day two, and finally, after way too long, I made a legitimate Lego Transformer. And here he is. This is the alt mode. He turns into a tarantula. Maybe the legs could be a little bit longer, but he does have eight of them. I'm not going to show you what he transforms into. That'll be for a separate video, but he's called Therafist, and I really like how he turned out. So, stay tuned for this guy. Let's move on. Now, I'd like to talk about a phenomenon where when I come up with a good idea the day prior, I create a Lego Transformer, or I create a mecha of some kind that I think looks really cool. The next day is the fallout of that inspiration, and this is a great example. I wanted to use these pink pieces, so I came up with this little hoppy drone thing. I don't know. He's got springs in his legs. Maybe those look a little more like erasers, though. And uh, the way these attach here, the pins actually have a little bit of give in these uh, bricks there, so that when you lift him up by the head, uh, they kind of extend. So when you do a hopping action with this guy and kind of bounce him around, there's this tactile feel that is kind of interesting, but let's be honest, he's super silly. And if you think this is simple, on the next day it gets even more uninspired, if you can believe it. This is probably the worst creation I came up with in the entire month. I wanted to use these pieces here in the legs for something. I mean, in theory, they seem useful, but I haven't been able to turn it into something that uh, works all that well. I use them in his legs here, and the rest is just kind of thrown together. He's basically a table scrap, and I apologize for everything. Now, on the next day, I built another race car. Maybe this is a remote control car of some kind, and this creation is perhaps a little bit more important than you might think at this point, because I used a technique here for the wheels where this tire actually can wrap around a one-by-one -one brick, and then that brick attaches to a hubcap here. It also creates the headlights, which I think is pretty interesting. I like the orange color in the body of the vehicle, and you can see it has some uh, rear lights as well as a bumper. It's a very simple creation, but again, this technique would be used on the next day. Now, a little bit of story time here. A long time ago, I saw a LEGO Transformer on YouTube. I cannot remember who built it, but the idea stuck with me for a long time. It wasn't an amazing Transformer, but it was extremely inspiring. They made an Optimus Prime, and they clearly couldn't figure out a way of making the head flip out. So what they did was attach a chain to the neck, and then attach the head on the other end of that chain, and tucked that whole chain assembly away in vehicle mode so that in robot mode they could pull the head off and reattach it on the neck and yes it was parts forming but it was all self-contained it was all tethered and I loved that idea and so for literally years I have wanted to make a Lego Transformer utilizing that sort of idea Another thing that I've wanted to make for years is a transformer that turns into a carriage, or a sleigh, or a chariot of some kind, perhaps. So I put both of those ideas together along with the technique I used the day prior with these tire pieces, and I built this outline for yet another LEGO Transformer. So the basic idea is that this assembly here would become some kind of animal pulling some kind of vehicle. This would split in half, and the two portions would attach to the spokes of the wheel, the tires would collapse, and you'd get something like this. 
Yes, it is parts forming, technically, but I think it's very clever, it's pretty tasteful, and it thinks outside of the box in a very interesting way. On top of that, this is the culmination of so many ideas that has been on my mind for so long that you can imagine I really, really wanted this to work. So, on the next day, I turned it into this. Now, originally, the idea was I wanted the entirety of the animal to split down the middle, and the two halves of the animal's head would become the feet of the robot. But I was having trouble with that concept. I couldn't make a head look natural and also split down the middle. So, I went with this problem to my friend Star Screamer. I called him up on Skype. We've been collaborating on projects for years, and he actually gave me the idea to separate the front portion of the animal entirely from the back. So this section here becomes the legs. This section here attaches to a different portion of the robot and is tethered separately with this chain. Now, of course, this idea here is not finished. You can see some uh, ununiform colors and some dubious connections in there. I would finish this on a later date, but until then, I needed some pieces. However, I couldn't get them on that next day. So, remember that fallout I was talking about where when I come up with the success the next day. Creatively, I'm a little spent. Well, I built this silly looking guy. Uh, this is sort of an experiment with a couple of tenuous connections. You can see that the way his mouth is built is just these headlight bricks attached to the corner of this plate here, and it gives him some teeth. The same sort of connections are used in his arms to give them this curved shape. You can see they're not completely connected together, and that was the basic idea for this creation, but the rest of it is pretty mediocre. However, from here, I have a confession to make. Usually when people are short on pieces and uh, can't get them from Pick-A-Brick or their, you know, Lego store, they go to Bricklink. And occasionally I will go to Bricklink as well when I can't find a part that I need. However, I have a local store that I go to that I have been going to for years. It's called Bricks and Minifigs. Now, if you don't know about this franchise, I recommend going to their website and using their store locator. They're pretty much all over America at this point, and I think there's a couple of them in Canada as well. Um, I'm not sure about overseas, but uh, it is this franchise of stores that is not affiliated with the LEGO group and they buy, sell, and trade new and used Lego bricks. The store you're looking at right now is the original Bricks and Minifigs. The company is based out of Camby, Oregon, and I am an Oregonian myself. I've been going here for longer than it was even in this building. This actually used to be a blockbuster video, and Bricks and Minifigs was in a tiny store across the railroad tracks, and I would go there twice a week after school to stock up on pieces. Here's what it looks like on the inside. You can see these tables full of used, loose bricks, and you can fill one of these buckets over here for like eight bucks, and I think that is well worth it. Behind the counter here, behind some glass, they have some used sets, and then on the back wall, they have some sealed old sets. Now, I think if you don't have one of these nearby, the next best option is Bricklink, but go to bricksandminifigs.com, use the store locator, see if you have one locally, because I highly recommend it. I owe so much to this location. It's also probably worth mentioning that I got these pictures from the Bricks and Minifigs Facebook page. I did not take them myself, so as thanks for that, go check out their Facebook page too. With that out of the way, on the last day of February, I went here with a mission to complete my latest LEGO Transformer before the end of the month. So, uh, 
cutting it a little bit close, but I did return victorious, and here is... Auxiliary. Now, I refined the build, you can see I made the connection to the cart a fair bit more compact, and I corrected the colors back here. I am super excited about this one. I cannot wait to show you how he transforms, but that'll be for a future video, of course. This also marks the end of February, an entire month of non-stop LEGO creations. <sighs> which I am going to have to get used to. But, so far, I can't argue with the results. I think this went pretty well. That'll also just about do it for this episode of Builder's Block. Usually at this point I'll be showcasing viewer submissions before wrapping things up, but since the first few here are going to be these massive endeavors to get through, I'm forgoing that segment until we get into the swing of things. That said, in the meantime, feel free to send pictures of your own creations to contactrollout at gmail.com. Remember, I'm still looking for music as well. I assure you that on a weekly basis, I'll try to get these videos down under 30 minutes long, but keep in mind, I'll only have built seven creations each week instead of an entire month's worth. If you stuck around and enjoy this series so far, thanks for watching, and don't forget to like this video, let me know what you think, share it with your friends, all that good stuff. The next episode is going to be a little bit different, make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. But until then, this has been Rollout, signing off.